Episode 130. Don't let her go. Blair spat out the meat she had just finished chewing and started coughing. Eating the meat in big bites, Miles was unable to stop due to the tastiness in his mouth. Incoherently, he said, But when I gave you the pine nuts, I did it on behalf of the tribe. It has nothing to do with me. I know. Blair also was focused on eating. Looking at the female who had her head lowered as she ate, her mildly wavy hair falling over her shoulders messily and appearing a little frizzy, Miles couldn't help but add, do eat more pine nuts. It's good for the hair. Hair? Blair paused for a moment. She glanced at Miles and only managed to react when she saw him looking at her hair. Oh, got it. Thanks. Behind the tree, with an expression so dark it was terrifying, Patricia stomped her feet before leaving in anger. On the first night at the Peacock Village, Blair suffered from insomnia. Being transported to the Beastman world over almost a year ago, this was the first time she was sleeping alone, and she wasn't quite used to it. The second day, she naturally woke up later. Blair haphazardly smoothed her hair and fixed her skirt before walking out of the wooden house. Scram! I'm not eating your pine nuts! Hearing the scream of the female from afar, Blair looked towards the source of that voice and saw, to her surprise, Miles being driven out from Patricia's wooden house. Sensing Blair's gaze on him, Miles looked towards her. Upon seeing this, Patricia walked out of the house and rolled her eyes at the sight of her. Scram! Patricia suddenly hollered. No idea if she was targeting Blair or Miles. The panicked Miles knelt before Patricia on one knee, his tone subservient. You said you would meet with me after you go into heat this year. Are you going back on your word? But why? Go and copulate with her. I don't want you anymore, Patricia said coldly. Blair was stunned. Miles glanced at Blair with a gaze that made her shiver. There was resentment and fury in his eyes. Blair thought to herself, Oh no, not again. She didn't stay on to listen in on their conversation any longer and simply went down the tree carefully before running out of the village. Lucius was standing tall and straight by the river for God knows how long. Upon seeing Blair, his wooden statue-like face slowly revealed a faint smile. You're here. Good morning, Blair forced a smile. She sat down by the river and sighed. Lucius also sat down. He showed Blair a piece of animal skin that carried a faint bloody smell. I made this yesterday. It's not very well done, but it should be all right to sleep on top of it. I'll bring you animal skin of better quality tomorrow. Thanks. Blair's coldness made Lucius's expression turn cold. Gripping Blair's shoulders, he asked, Are you fine? Did they mistreat you? Blair looked up at him and shook her head after a moment's hesitation. It's just that I miss Roger and Stephen, Blair said. She didn't wish to cause Lucius any more trouble. She decided she would just avoid Patricia and Miles in the future. Lucius let go of her and smiled bitterly. Lucius gently said as he stroked Blair's tummy that appeared bigger than yesterday. Don't worry, I'll take good care of you. Blair had no idea how to respond to that. Actually, Lucius was what was troubling her the most now. She washed her face by the river, then let Lucius help her apply the purple ball liquid again, before dabbing the ash from roasting the meat on her arms and legs, making her appear dusty. Under Lucius's reluctant gaze, Blair went back to the Peacock Village with big and small bags. No idea what it was that Miles said, but Patricia seemed to have forgiven him. The two of them were sitting on a tree branch, chatting and laughing. Upon seeing Blair, the smile instantly vanished from Patricia's face. Hey, 
Where are the pine nuts you said you were going to peel for me? Patricia, who had slightly upturned eyes, asked. Blair took in a deep breath to make herself calm down before saying, They're in the wooden house. I'll bring them over to you right now. When Blair came out with a tree leaf holding the pine nuts, Patricia murmured, You really did peel them. Just then, something seemed to occur to Patricia, which made her shove Miles fiercely. You gave her pine nuts again, and you said you don't fancy her. Scram! Patricia howled hysterically. Although the pine cone was big, there were only two or three handfuls of pine nuts inside. Blair had peeled the pine nuts from around two pine cones. No, I only gave her two pine cones, Miles explained anxiously. It must be other males. He had wanted to go on when Blair interrupted his words. I didn't eat the pine nuts Miles gave me. I've peeled them all for you. Patricia's expression turned sunny at hearing this. She picked up the peeled pine nuts and started eating them. That's more like it. Blair heaved a sigh of relief. She was about to leave when she heard Patricia say, Miles told me that you were the one who roasted the meat. Since that's the case, roast it for me every day. Just then, the sharp-eyed Patricia saw that Blair had brought roast meat again. In a tone that suggested that she wasn't to be refused, she said, First, hand me that meat you roasted. I feel like eating it now. Blair, who couldn't help getting angry, widened her eyes. What if I refuse? This was no longer a fair trade, but plundering. Then get lost from this place. The person who spoke was Miles. He gazed coldly at Blair as though he was looking at a stranger completely different from yesterday. Blair gritted her teeth and said, Fine, take it. After feigning nonchalance and tossing the food into the house, Blair turned around and the tears in her eyes finally slipped down her cheeks. The stress and politics of these tribes was getting to her. Miles said as he gazed at Blair, If you feel aggrieved, you can find a peacock male as a mate. This way, you wouldn't need to do chores for someone else. Hearing that voice from behind, Blair inhaled deeply to suppress the urge to attack everyone in the tribe. No need. I'll leave after giving birth. With that, Blair strode away. The village chief, who was on top of the tree, saw this scene. Patricia said with a pout, I'll believe you now that I hear you asking her to choose other males. Great. Miles tapped Patricia's nose in an indulging manner. You're the most beautiful female in our village. How can I possibly like someone other than you? Patricia said with a chuckle. But I'm still fuming. I get angry at the sight of that Blair. I haven't decided to give you my first time. It will depend on your performance. I won't let you down. The sound of an old peacock rang from the top of the tree. Miles' countenance turned serious. He speedily removed his animal skin skirt and transformed into a peacock before flying towards the top of the tree. Dad, is something the matter? Miles stood before the old peacock respectfully. The old peacock waved his wing and sent Miles flying. Bang! The ladder crashed against the wooden wall. Miles shrunk in the wings he had spread open, but before he could crawl back up, a pair of brown claws appeared before his eyes. Do you know why I'm hitting you? The old peacock's voice was raspy and murky, yet it exuded the dignity only possessed by someone in power for a long time. For being rude to a female, Miles replied without having to ponder the question. So you know. But this isn't the greatest reason I'm angry at you. What made me most furious was seeing you ostracize a female, especially one who is pregnant. The old peacock was so mad that he stomped on the ground. For her to be pregnant at such a young age, her fertility must be pretty good. How could you? You're young after all. How can I feel at ease about leaving this village in your hands? I know all these, Miles got up and said. Don't worry, 
I'm only doing this to pursue Patricia. I will handle other matters appropriately. Upon hearing this, the old peacock's expression eased a little. He said, That female looks ready to me, and also doesn't interact much with the males. She's only spoken to you before. If you were to woo her, you'd stand the greatest chance. That's impossible. Miles's crest feathers flared up a little, exuding a high-spirited manner. My mate has to be the most beautiful in this village. Only Patricia is good enough for me. The old peacock sighed. He was very satisfied with the son of his who earned his second animal stripe in his twenties, which meant he would definitely be able to become a three-striped beast man in the future. Even when placed in a large tribe, he could be considered rather powerful. There were only five three-striped beast men, including himself in this village, and they were all getting on in age. In the future, Miles was bound to become the most powerful beast man in the village, so he absolutely had the right to pursue the best female possible. Hence the old peacock merely said, Then you should hurry up and make arrangements. Make sure that she doesn't leave. Okay. My health is deteriorating. I'll leave the village in your hands. The old peacock walked into the house in an exhausted manner and said without turning his head, you may leave. Miles nodded in response before spreading his wings and flying down. At night, with a clear moon and few stars in the skies, in a mountain where there were plenty of short shrubs, the black and red figure of a snake flashed indistinctly. Several eagle beastmen were in light sleep on a shrub. Several eagle beastmen were keeping a vigil for the rest of them and didn't detect any abnormality. Suddenly, the figure of the snake leaped up into the air with a crash, surfacing above the crowns of the short shrubs and exposed under the moonlight. Before the startled eagle beastman could let out a screech, he was ferociously bitten by the snake and held to the ground. After letting out a short and pitiful cry, he stopped breathing. Stephen had chosen such a place to make it more convenient for him to attack the eagle beastmen. Those eagle beastmen who were lucky enough not to be attacked instantly charged towards the cave where the snake beastman was resting. With Stephen not around, they reckoned this was their best shot at killing Blair. Stephen, too, instantly slithered towards the cave, following right behind the eagle beastman. The sound of wings flapping rang out from the cave, after which silence resumed. After swallowing the eagle beastman, whose body was still instinctively convulsing, the snake beastman lazily laid at the entrance of the cave. He had killed another two. They had become smarter and had diverted more than half of them to rest elsewhere. With time running out, he had to find another method. 